Welcome back to Scene TV. Today we have a great show lined up for you, and my name is Maya McNulty, your host. I'd like to welcome to the studio Pete Bardunez, the President and CEO of the Southern Saratoga Chamber of Commerce. Pete, welcome. As you know, I'm a member of the Schenectady Chamber, mm -hmm. and uh, we love to share exciting events and news that's happening within the chambers. Recently, you did a project for the Lock 19, mm -hmm. the historic. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, well, historic Lock 19 was really exciting for me because being a relative newcomer to the area, I've lived here about two years. And by the way, I, I do want to say that uh, Chuck Steiner at Schenectady Chamber has been a very good friend and colleague, and it's really great that we get a chance to work in conjunction sometimes. Um, but as far as the lock, what happened was simply it started with a little trip out in the woods. Um, Historic Lock 19 was part of the 1842 enlargement of the Erie Canal. And um, in 1915 or so, when they started up the new Barge Canal, mm -hmm. they kind of just shut it all down. They shut down an entire strength of the canal and just left it there. And it got kind of lost in the woods. And so somebody said to me, Pete, you've got to see this. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, let's go for a walk. And I went out there. It was actually Eric Hamilton of the Mohawk Towpath. Uh, scenic byway he took me for a walk out there and there was this somewhere mixed into the trees and crooks and crannies there were stones and I said okay that's obviously a structure of some sort and he said well that's one of the historic locks so we started to say wouldn't it be great if we could clean it up mm -hmm. well as things happen sometimes especially around here things little little ideas tend to get very big in a hurry and we got some great partners that came in to help us out and the next thing you know, we're doing this major project that not only preserved and renovated the lock and, and the surrounding area, but also uh, gave the students at Shenandoah High School a really great opportunity to do an engineering project. Excellent. Tell us about the students and some of the volunteers. Yes. We had a, 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 quite a team that was assembled, and that's why uh, I was so honored to be able to present an award to them. Um, first of all, the students from, were from Shen. They had uh, 80 of them from the high school. Uh, a lot of them were engineering students, science students, but not all. There were also history students, uh, art students. Um, you know, we wanted a marketing students because we wanted the idea was just like a real project. If you're going to build something, you don't want it to just be a structure stuck out in the woods. You want it to have some um, sensitivity to the surroundings. You're in a nature preserve. You want to have uh, some marketability so the chamber could turn around and use this to attract people to the area. So we really made it like a real project for them and it was very exciting. They had mentors um, from GE, Turner Construction and Momentive. And that was really exciting because now you had people donating their time, people that build power plants and giant buildings all over the world, mm -hmm. literally donating their time to sit with our, our local students. And, and that was a lot of fun to see those um, engineers actually working alongside the kids to make something big happen. That's great. Yeah. Uh, really empowering the students. Nice. I actually teach uh, entrepreneurship at Schenectady High School through oh, Junior wow. Achievement. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. They love being a part. And so we're working on a project where mm -hmm. they're building a product. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be kind of neat. And it's an eight-week process. So that's really great. Um, it's fun. The, the cleanup efforts, how long did that take? Well, believe it or not, the cleanups were pretty quick. I mean, once you got a group of people together, I mentioned our three big mentor companies, but we had quite a team. We had uh, uh, Turner Construction, as I mentioned, sort of brought everybody together. But we had uh, people like AJS Masonry, Keller & Sons. Um, we had uh, Legacy Timber Frames, Trex, SMRT Engineers. It was quite a group of people all came together. Uh, County Waste lent some dumpsters and things to put materials in. The canal does this clean sweep every April, every Earth Day. I think mm -hmm. this year it's April 20th, if I'm not mistaken. And we, um, so we just took advantage of that date to go down and become part of that team, which literally is doing projects across the entire state, along the entire length mm -hmm. of the canal. And um, the cleanup was only a few days, and then the, some of the pros came in and cut up all the trees, and then we had a few people just repair a few mm -hmm. of those b blocks, you know, that were yeah. kind of getting twisted. Yeah, they looked roots. dangerous. Yeah, you know, so. got it straightened out a little bit, and... About how many volunteers did you have come out to help? Um, all told, there were probably, uh, the entire project, include the students, I would guess about 150 volunteers. Um, in terms of the, the final task, which was building the, the bridge that provides access across the lock, mm -hmm. uh, there actually is, I believe it was about, um, I want to say about 1,600 volunteer hours were put into that. Wow. Um, and did they, the students, did they get community service for that? Yes. They did? That's great. Um, when this project was got started, did you find that it was overwhelming or did you think like, oh, I can do this? <laughs> well, you know, it was a little scary for me. I mean, this was my first big project uh, as at the helm of this Chamber of Commerce. I come from a, you know, a little smaller community where 
Um, our, our ideas were like, you know, clean up the community park and stuff like that. Okay, that's that's one thing. That's pretty easy to do. Uh-huh. But this was all of a sudden, not only are we cleaning up this structure, but also, remember, it's a historic structure. Right. Okay, I mean, this is part of what f- led the Industrial Revolution. Uh-huh. <laughs> and here I am having the audacity to think my little group could, you know, <laughs> do something with this. But we came up with something that I think everyone's going to be proud of. Were there any hiccups along the way, um, I, like the structure and stuff? Was it when you started the project? Did it seem as though, well, maybe this wasn't going to be a good idea, or could be even dangerous because you're making the bike path and a park for people public to come? Yes, I mean it's been there and it's adjacent to the existing towpath anyway. Mm-hmm. So I mean people could have gone there anyway, even though it was a mess. So now we feel that by cleaning it up, I mean, we, we you would, could make the case that perhaps some people wouldn't even know it was there. Yeah. You could have just thought you were walking through the trees and gone into a hole, you know. <laughs> now it's very clear what's there. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very open. Um, there were some pitfalls. I mean, at one time we thought there was going to be more property available on the far side of the lock so that we could have built a larger park there. Mm-hmm. But as it turned out, over the years, erosion has kind of taken that away. So we had to be a little more careful on how we set it up. But I think the end result was 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 pretty good, and it, it opens up a, a big set, center section that people have, haven't been able to walk on for a century. Yeah. Who um, funded this project? Entirely through private in-kind donations and a very hefty uh, contribution from Curtis Lumber that uh, supplied mm-hmm. uh, most of the wood that was used for, to build the bridge. Um, there was no government money used. Um, it was all done basically by people coming together, everybody contributing pieces. Mm-hmm. Now, is there a fee to use the park? Nope. Nope. No. This is all part of the, uh, like I said, it, it, it's, the, it's the Mohawk towpath, the original uh-huh. where the mules walked. It leads into the Vischer Ferry Preserve. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, people come to the other side of the Vischer Ferry Preserve because that's where the Whipple Bridge is and there's some other attractions there. This is a little unusual because we're on the far side. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting, though, to ponder what might have been. It's actually the access is where Vischer's Ferry mm-hmm. actually was. And at one time, there was actually a bridge there. And you wonder what would have happened if the bridge hadn't been swept away by the Mohawk River because it might have changed forever the, the access points to upstate yeah. New York. So now the restoration is completed. Was, was the phase one, phase two, phase three? So the completion part is it's completed 100%? Well, yeah, as far as the bridge, it's done. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to dedicate it on April, uh, the end of April. I want to say the 29th. My, my memory's slipping me a little bit uh-huh. there. But we're dedicating it at the end of April officially. It's there now. People could go to see it if they wanted to uh-huh. trudge through the mud. So is it open? Well, well, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's... So you can just get on your bike and go yes. through the mall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Like I said, we're going to have an official dedication, is, but it's it's right there. It's part of the fact that land. we're coming off of uh, winter, or is there going to be another cleanup effort? Yes. <laughs> April <laughs> so, 20th. We are actually April looking 20th. for volunteers. So if you want to do something, uh, you can always contact the chamber because we would love to have a really good crew go out. We're going to do a really nice one more time, clean it up. And then that's why we're going to dedicate it a week later so yeah. we can have some nice photographs for everyone to share. So you have a lot of partners in this huge effort, this massive effort. And recently you were at the Gobi Awards and it celebrates volunteerism and mm-hmm. philanthropy in the capital region. Mm-hmm. And you guys recently received the Most Outstanding Project Award. How, how does that make you feel to bring it home to your team? It, it was exciting. I mean, you know, our corporate partners made this work. We had an idea, it was exciting, but to know that these guys were able to actually come and, and bring together some pretty heavy duty uh, machines and, and, and uh, engineers and stuff, that people that do stuff all over the world, for our little project was was really exciting um just just to know that that got done and by the way i, I do want to give a shout out to our friends at the new york state canal corporation too yeah. because we couldn't have done it without their yeah. um participation yeah. and it was an honor to stand next to brian stratton the uh, commissioner at the um at the gobies and hand out the awards yeah that was a really exciting time um do you see yourself doing taking on any more large massive projects like this I might be crazy, but the honest answer is yes. Uh, <laughs> we are so pleased with how this worked uh-huh. that we're now going to create, we actually was the prototype, a template, if you will, for our mm-hmm. new program called the Community Development Pro- Program. And we actually have it written into our strategic plan this year. We're working on our next big project is at the Brookside Museum in Boston Spa, mm-hmm. where we're going to do, again, uh, some volunteers out there. We haven't set the date yet. It'll be late spring. Uh, you know, literally hammer some nails and fix the place a little bit. And then we're also going to do an interesting project, a genealogy project. Um, That museum was originally there to house the histories, the stories of settlers that came here around the time of the Revolutionary War. 
this kind of a gap. And now we have a lot of people coming here from all over the world to once again create a revolution, if you will, in the tech technological uh, fields. So we're actually doing a project where if you've been in this area for the last 15 years um, and you either live or work in Saratoga County, we'd like to ask if you'd like to be interviewed on video. So it's going to be kind of a neat project. That's great. Um, so tell me, how are you feeling now that this project is completed? Do you feel that it's a sense of relief, accomplishment? Uh, is it something that you really are, I don't know, you feel great about, like, you know? Yeah, I mean... And the team and organization that you were with. Yeah, I mean, you almost wonder, you know, what, what ghosts well, are you capable, lurking. Like, I mean, am I capable you know, of doing this? <laughs> we're, we're, we cleaned up a piece of, of property that was built, was part of the vision of DeWitt Clinton mm -hmm. two centuries ago, okay? And there we are having the audacity to think that we can make a difference, and we did. We were able to do something where this lock is now an accessible part of, of our community. Uh -huh. It can be used to teach some history. Uh, there's other things that could be done later that maybe some of the schools would like to do just kind of on their own, or maybe we'll help shepherd it a little to do add some more features there to bring uh -huh. it to look a little bit more like it did when it was last used. Um, but even, you know, just the idea that people can go there and, and you can bird watch there. There's eagles flying overhead. Mm -hmm. You can see some beautiful nature and scenery. The construction, the, the engineering that went into building those locks was just fascinating. And um, just, to, just to have a little fun. Yeah. You know? Now, the cleanup efforts, will that be on the Southern Saratoga Chamber website? So yes. that people yes. that are watching. It is, day? and it's also on stakeholders.org. Uh, okay. the, um, the stakeholders website is also okay. has it there as an event. All right. Excellent. Well, Peter, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. I really have learned a lot, and I think that the viewers will really appreci appreciate um, the historic Lock 19. Thank and you. thank you. It's my yeah. pleasure. Thanks. Up next on Scene TV is Darlene Zay and Lori Michael Cerrone, who are spearheading the project for the Mont Pleasant Boys and Girls Club. I'd like to welcome the ladies to the studio here at Scene TV. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Great to have you. Darlene, how long have you been doing this volunteer work for the Mont Pleasant Boys and Girls Club? I started last year for the um, Rotterdam Club, and we had great success with that club. So I decided that I wanted to keep giving forward so I decided I had to talk with Shane the director and I and asked him if I could you know if there's an opportunity to do another club and he says absolutely so I ended up thinking about it and I said you know what I really worked with a lot of great people and I did it kind of myself to put it together and Lori and I worked together um, she's a designer and we've done projects together and I thought what a she's perfect her and I were great together so it was like she was the first person that came to my mind to think that it would team up and co-chair, and um, so here we are. <laughs> what were some of the obstacles that you overcame that you're going to use for expertise for the new Mount Pleasant that you used in Rotterdam that you are going to use over at Mount Pleasant to make your project more easy for you? I think it's the timing and sharing um, the deadline with somebody is, is really, really important. Um, there's there was things that you know I could have done a lot more but just the time wise and I didn't have the capability of the know-how to do it and mm -hmm. I've learned through that and so mm -hmm. yeah um, you so we started the Mont Pleasant Boys and Girls Club and scene TV will be filming we did day one it's similar to extreme makeover but now this is called extreme remodel and tell us some of the the rooms and the conditions about the rooms that you feel that the builders, how is that going to work? You can go over there. Well, what we're going to do is um, we really want to make this a space that, you know, when the kids come after school and uh, they come to the facility and they, they go through the, the different programs that are available to them, mm -hmm. we really want to make it a space that they're, they're proud of. Um, and they're proud to come to and they're, they're proud to, mm -hmm. to take ownership of. So um, as you enter the facility, uh, we really want to um, make it a more open space, a friendlier space, um, a more inviting space, bright and happy. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're looking to do is we're taking the different areas and we're calling them zones. And we're looking for area builders and remodelers to come in and actually select a zone, whether it's a gym 
or an office space or one of the bathrooms. We're really trying to focus on creating a teen area mm -hmm. because it's really, really important to keep the teens um, in a safe environment, keep them off the streets. And um, so basically that's what we're doing. We're, we're creating different zones. Mm -hmm. We're giving builders and remodelers the opportunity to, to take one of the zones and really make it their own. Mm -hmm. And we're looking to redo floors and we're looking to organize spaces and we're looking to you know paint colors and just a lot of different things to really make mm -hmm. it an updated safe space for these children to come to after school and you know waiting for their parents or um, whoever it may be the significant person to pick them up so that's that's the goal of, of the project yeah I know that they stress education quite a bit Very over at the boys so. and uh, girls club so yes. I know that one of their rooms is that's one of the things that they wanted to create was a an work environment that was going to be the next level to so that they felt comfortable doing their homework and, and their ed getting ahead in their education so it is a great thing that we can get these builders on board to help create a work environment that's effective for for them. Darlene, um, where do you see this mission going? Is it going to be a, a big mission for you under, uh, on your shoulders or do you feel that you you know it, you see light at the end of the tunnel? It, it happened. What's the time frame? Um, the time frame is in August. We're going to look to complete it the last two weeks in August. But um, I wouldn't say it's a mission. Um, when I did the Rotterdam Club, um, I walked away from that with my whole life changing. Um, my whole outlook on, on things. It just gave me the gratification that I never thought that would come. And it was just amazing. And that feeling was amazing. Uh -huh. And um, so I'm just kind of just want to go forward and keep doing this because it's great when you give forward. And when you do give forward, really good things happen to you. And it's yeah. nice to have people come together, working together for such a great cause. And we're also looking to do a um, team center um, for the teens and stuff and right now we have Synthesis who helped us with Rotterdam Project is now helping us and we've mm -hmm. had the teens come in and they're helping us design the whole club so Synthesis I gotta have to you know give them a hand because they really stepped up to the plate again yes. and they're really great people great firm so we're really blessed to have them and the kids are very excited on helping being part of the mm -hmm. club they go to the club so they know what they need in the club so we're really thrilled that we're doing the, this. How many kids um, are, over, are over at the Rotterdam area? I'm not sure. You're not sure? And how do you know how much are over at Mount Pleasant? About 80. About 80. Right 80. Now. Yeah. So, uh, and they can facilitate, I believe they said, about 100. So there definitely is room to grow. Um, and you had mentioned the education piece earlier, which uh -huh. definitely is so important there. Yeah. And there is a space upstairs that is a homework area, and the stairs that go up to the homework area are very um, misshaped and dangerous to go up, and that's one of our goals, is to actually have these stairs rebuilt and uh -huh. the homework space, you know, actually enlarged and made, you know, in a, in a more safe, you know, surrounding for them to work in. Mm -hmm. And so the education piece, we are trying to work and, and make that a, a better and safer space for them to be in as well. So um, very important. Yeah. And so we, we're hoping to make this a place where more children will come. Yeah. Darlene, who are some of the community leaders that stepped up to lend a hand? Um, Mike Piclavano from Piclavano Builders um, ended up being my general contractor for the whole project. Um, and then Richie Regal from United Remodeling helped me. Um, Hederowski's helped me. Actually, the whole community um, really helped. Um, what I wanted to do, my focus was, um, I live in Rotterdam, and I wanted to do something in my community to give back to the community. And I just wanted to have that community come together mm -hmm. and work on this project because it was part of their community. And so many people in that community really did step up to the plate. And now that we're doing Mount Pleasant, I want to use this community, Schenectady community, and use different people and let the community of Schenectady come together and work on this. Because what's better than helping a child? Mm -hmm. um, it seems like um, a lot of children get left behind, and I think it's really important to move ahead and help the children of our community. You gotta, you Absolutely. gotta start from home. Okay, I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And how do you feel about that? I, I totally agree. I mean, you know, the, the community really needs to help itself within. And uh, so far, a lot of people within the community are already stepping up. And we're looking for a lot more support. 
and we'll be reaching out to the community for that support as well. And the wonderful thing is um, our project is called Giving Forward. Mm -hmm. And Darlene uh, did such an incredible job on the uh, Rotterdam project and she was such an inspiration. It was mm -hmm. easy for me to, to say and proud to be a part of this uh -huh. um, with her on the Mount Pleasant project. And I know the children um, from the Rotterdam um, Boys and Girls Club will actually mm -hmm. be giving forward and helping us with this new project at Mont Pleasant. So we're, we're hoping as we move forward with every project, uh, the children will be giving forward as well because really that's what it's about. Yeah, I love the name giving forward because it means so much. And the kids are actually going to be um, empowering themselves to be a part of their own Absolutely, project that they're going right. to benefit from. Um, Darlene, is there any fundraising efforts scheduled in the near future for the uh, Mount Pleasant Boys and Girls Club? Yes, we're having an event on June 19th um, at 6 o'clock um, for a um, fundraiser and a silent auction, which we're looking to invite you know, a lot of people in the community and have them see what this whole project is about. Because if it's, we need the community to make this project work. It's very important that the community steps up mm -hmm. and helps. That's going to be at Water's Edge. Um, oh, excellent. Yes. And so it's right over the bridge. Yes. Great. Yes. Excellent. Yep. So, Lori, are we looking for any volunteers to help with the Mont Pleasant Boys and Girls Club? We are, and I appreciate you asking. We are definitely looking for uh, volunteers. We have a lot of committees in place, and we definitely need uh, people to, to fill in, um, you know, in, 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 on many levels. Uh, volunteers the last two weeks. Um, when we're doing the project at Mont Pleasant, we are also looking for volunteers to help with the silent auction, um, which is again on June 19th. And we're also, also looking for people to donate for the silent auction. Um, and certainly we're looking for um, any builders or remodelers uh, to certainly come in and, and select a zone or a room to help us complete this project. So um, all are welcome. Great. Thank you both so much. Now here's a clip from the Mount Pleasant Boys and Girls Club. Ian is the director of the Mont Pleasant Boys and Girls Club here in Schenectady. Ian, tell us what an extreme remodeling would mean to the kids here in the community over here at Mont Pleasant. Uh, I think it would mean a lot to the kids here in the community. They, uh, we have so many kids that come in the building every month uh, that by having new facilities or a new, uh, remodeled facilities, it would give them uh, more space. It would give them new things to do, um, particularly our teen population that we're, um, we're, we're constantly working with, trying to get them in the building. Um, by having a new teen room for them, it gives them a place to be away from a lot of our younger members so that they can be somewhere, be teens, but not have their younger siblings pestering them every day um, when they're in the building. And they can go and hang out, do their homework, um, and be teens without any disruption of younger kids because that's one of their big issue, one of their big things is that there's too many young kids here for them so having a separate building for that a separate room for that would be great but uh, storage facilities to be able to store things so that we're able to use our other rooms effectively um, for our kids and it's not overcrowded because that's the big problem right now is that storage takes up space that we could be using for other things well, we are in day one of our extreme remodeling here at the Mount Pleasant Boys and Girls Club in Schenectady. Ladies, I want to thank you so much for joining me today at Scene TV. We've really learned a lot about the Mount Pleasant Boys and Girls Club, and I'm really thrilled that Scene TV will be a part of it. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks thank for having us. We appreciate thank it. You. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. And if you'd like to volunteer with the Mount Pleasant Boys and Girls Club, please call the number on our screen.